What is going on everyone? My name is Shane Moynihan. I'm just doing a little bit of a different type of video for my YouTube. See if this uh, connects with anyone pretty well. I feel like I want to do a little bit more raw, real life type videos. Because sometimes, you know, talking head videos can get kind of boring and old. So today I wanted to talk about why you need to have the right mindset when you get into real estate investing. Because some things can be a pain in the butt. Like, I'm just going to be 100% honest with you. If you see me looking around, it's because I'm keeping an eye on my dog. Um, as you can see, I'm out at the dam. But the other night, last Wednesday night, I was sitting on my couch. Almost time for bed. It was about 8.45 at night. I go to bed around 9. I know, I'm an early bird. But get a text from my downstairs tenant. Hey, we haven't had heat or hot water for the past hour or so. Uh, we tried resetting the boiler. Nothing seems to be working. So I'm like, ah, oh, here we go. So instead of being what you actually want to do as some people, you want to just be like, Meh, I didn't see that text. I didn't see that text, right? But you have responsibilities as a real estate investor to take care of your properties. So went down. Did what I could do, see if I could find anything out. Nothing changed with my, me doing it. So I uh, called my buddy of mine, who's an HVAC guy. He tried walking me through a couple things, make sure we had oil. I bled that, did all that stuff. Everything was good. So he had to come up. I called him at like 9. He had to come up to my place 40 minutes away. Got there at like 9.45, 10 o'clock. And we had to fix the boiler. Long story short, he fixes it that night. Finally get it running around 10.30. By noontime the next day, hey, no heat again. I'm like, ah, son of a bitch. Keep in mind, this is a 30-year-old furnace, so like, or boiler. I'm just like, ah, I hope I don't have to replace the whole thing because, you know, of course you budget for it, but spending five, six grand is never that fun, um, especially on something just as instrumental as a boiler it's not like something you can drive every day or show off so anyways call my buddy back up again the part that we needed was a rare part so he couldn't get it that day he was booked up so luckily my tenants had space heaters they fully understood the situation i was on top of every text like i'm not ignoring them i'm not putting them to the side i'm keeping it straight with them i'm like hey just so you know we're working with an old boiler the part we need is very rare Buddy finally found it about an hour and a half away from where I live on Friday of that week. Came up, had everything fixed by noon, heat running, everything back to normal. Sorry for my finger. Um, but the moral of the story is, if you want good tenants, you have to be a good landlord. What that means is when stuff comes up that's annoying, you don't want to deal with, go deal with it. You have to go deal with it. Because if you start ignoring your tenants and you let all this little stuff start adding up, why do you think they have to pay rent on time? Why do you think that they're going to respect you if you don't respect them? Yes, it's your house. Yes, they're renting it from you. But in the least, you owe them a place to live, a livable area. So you can't just be neglecting these little things. And I see so many people do this and then they either, one, they start hating real estate investing because it's too much of a hassle, or even worse, second, they become a slumlord and they keep investing in real estate, but they don't figure out any systems to do it good. <laughs> in, other, in lack of better term, they just take the half-ass route of everything and don't actually take pride in their properties. The way I look at it, granted, I only have four units. I'm still a smaller investor. But I always say, if I wouldn't personally live in the unit, I don't feel comfortable renting it out. And I have not a super high standard of living, but like, I want nice stuff. I want it to look decent. I don't want it to be a 1910 kitchen that's never been updated and the thing is gross. No, fix it up, get it looking good. You're gonna demand more rent. You're gonna demand better tenants because guess what? Most likely, if people are in good financial situations, 
they're probably going to want to live in a nice apartment. They're not going to be applying for the shitty apartment that looks like it's never been updated or touched and looks gross. So if you want to find good tenants, you have to supply good products. That means fixing up your properties, keeping them up to date, being responsive with your tenants. Like I've had it happen twice in actually both in the same apartment building. Both tenants have had to reach out to me because my uh, property management system kind of, it was on a year to year lease where it should have been on monthly. I didn't know that, know that, but both times, one expired in March, one expired this month. On the first of the month, both tenants, two different tenants, text me, hey, just so you know, it says our lease is up. I can't pay rent. I was like, oh, let me just go fix that. Here you go. They paid that day. So you being responsive will bounce off the tenants and have them be good tenants. Of course, this is a huge part of screening and you want to screen correctly because well, that's really the only time you have to choose your tenants is when you're screening them on if you actually want them as a tenant or not. So that is one of the biggest pro or not problems, but one of the biggest things people skip out on and they don't set hard enough standards, I would say for their tenants. Set a list, credit score. If you allow smoking or not, I would say no every time. If you allow pets or not, if you have a certain credit score you want, I think I already said credit score, certain income, stuff like that. Sorry, I'm forgetting some things. I'm trying to think this off the top of my head. But set those standards and keep to those standards. I'm not saying I'm a rude person or mean in any type of way, but if the tenant starts off with a sob story, and with, ooh, life is so tough, I don't want them. Is that rude? Go find another apartment. I don't know, I'm not being rude. That's not, don't come at me with a sob story. I'm not giving out handouts, I'm renting my house. I'm not just giving it out to a random person. So set your standards, take your heart out of this when you're setting these places, because you will hear some bad stories. And you're like, like I've had homeless people come to my place before. Like, why are you even coming here? You don't have any income. I'm not being rude, but I'm not just gonna place homeless people in my house. So like, get these things up front and be good to your tenants. Once you find good tenants, be good to them. Don't become friends with them. Don't take it too far, because then they'll pull out the friend card. But have a respectful, type relationship to them, be responsive, be nice, and always assume responsibility. Even if it's not yours, assume responsibility, fix the problem. That's all you can do. So this is just a little real talk type deal out in the wild with Shane. If you liked it, hit that subscribe button and that like button. And uh, let me know if you want to see more stuff like this, or if you have any topics I can chit chat about while I'm out on my, uh, rucks with this i am i do have a ruck sack on but um let me know and i'm gonna be getting a wow uh, you just almost saw me fall in the puddle that was slippery i uh forgot my gimbal again today but i will be getting a little thing so i can hold it so that my hands aren't shaking all around so sorry about that but i wanted to film this see if it's something i want to put on youtube and if you see it well i put it on youtube so i'll catch you next week